one of the questions we've been trying to answer is um, how long have I got doc effectively? So um, uh, patients, their carers, healthcare professionals frequently want to know uh, towards the end of their life um, how much time they've got left to them uh, in order to allow themselves to get uh, prepared uh, for their impending death. Uh, and that might be just simply things like writing a will um, or speaking to loved ones or um, organising um, where they want to be when they die. And unfortunately, doctors uh, currently aren't very good at predicting uh, the length of survival of patients after they finish their treatment and they have progressive advanced cancer. So the purpose of our study was to see if we could improve upon doctors' uh, intuition about these matters. Well, we studied over a 1,000 patients up and down the country who were mostly under the care of uh, hospices uh, and hospital palliative care teams. And we collected um, data about uh, the level of their symptoms, how active they were, whether they were eating, uh, what their nutritional state was like. Um, and we also collected uh, some blood specimens from the patients. And we followed them up uh, until they died and then used the data that we collected to try to predict uh, how long uh, the patients were likely to survive. And we compared that against doctors' own uh, clinical predictions of survival. So what we found was that um, although doctors um, and nurses can make uh, predictions of survival which are related to actual survival, they are fairly inaccurate. Um, and more than that, there's a large inter-individual variation. So different clinicians, uh, some are good prognosticators and some are bad prognosticators. Um, with our, uh, with our measurements, um, in one group of patients, where we were only restricted ourselves to collecting uh, observational data, we were able to produce a tool which was as accurate as the best of the clinicians, but didn't rely on their subjective judgments. And in the other group of patients, where we were able to collect blood test data, we were make, able to make significant improvements on the accuracy of those predictions. I think it is important to say that what we've done, although it's a large study, it does need to be uh, replicated, I think, by other researchers um, before we could say that this is available for uh, widespread adoption or widespread use. But what I think we've been able to do is produce uh, an instrument uh, which has been validated and which now needs field testing. So I think we need to now take this instrument out uh, into wider practice and see whether it works and what impact it has on um, clinical practice. So I think uh, it will have uh, significant benefits for patients themselves. Um, similarly, it's a question that we're frequently asked by carers uh, and relatives of patients. But also for, in terms of planning health services, so for clinicians themselves, identifying which patients may be appropriate to admit to hospices, um, when would be the appropriate time to discharge patients home who want to die at home. Uh, those sorts of uh, organisational issues would be helped by having a, a better prognostic tool than simple clinicians' judgments.